Hi folks, today I want to address a question that comes up frequently when I film a launch. I'm often asked why it looks like the rocket turns horizontally, and then even looks like it's coming back down towards the ground during the launch, as seen in this still frame from the recent Falcon Heavy demo flight. The simple answer is that rockets do not reach orbit by flying straight up. Instead, they have to pitch over and, in fact, most of their energy has to go into building up large amounts of horizontal velocity, over 7.5 kilometers per second for a low Earth orbit. Although Falcon Heavy looks like it's pitching down towards the ground in this still photo, it's actually flying over the curvature of the Earth, and from the perspective of a ground observer near the launch site, it will look like it's getting closer and closer to the horizon as it approaches orbit. We will take a closer look at the trajectory in three-dimensional space so that you can see how it looks to an observer from the ground and how it looks to a camera flying in space. But before we do that, let's first take a look at what would happen if Falcon Heavy were instead to launch straight up. Doing that forfeits the Earth's rotational velocity for building up horizontal velocity to reach orbit. Orbital velocity is measured relative to the stationary center of the Earth, and so by launching east from Florida, you take advantage of a lot of the Earth's rotation. The farther from the equator you launch, and the farther from due east you launch, the less advantage you get from launching with the Earth's rotation. If you launch straight up, you get basically no advantage at all, and as a result, Falcon Heavy stalls out well before it reaches Mars. Because it failed to take advantage of Earth's rotation, and because of increased gravity losses from spending more time fighting gravity with the engines, you can see that the Tesla's orbit, in green, is much smaller than Mars' orbit, in yellow. And I should point out that no fuel was kept in reserve for any recovery attempt of either the side boosters or the core stage. Every last drop of fuel was used, and as you can see, the green orbit representing the Tesla is well inside the yellow orbit representing Mars. In fact, it stalls out just barely escaping Earth's gravity in a solar orbit that is very similar to Earth's orbit around the Sun. Not only is this highly inefficient, but it's dangerous as well, because if anything should go wrong with the rocket as it flies straight up, all that debris is going to come right back down on the launch pad and the surrounding area. Pitching over and taking advantage of the Earth's rotation also gives you the advantage that if anything should go wrong with the rocket, at least the debris will go out into the ocean. And that's also why they restrict boats from entering an area that is directly underneath the trajectory of the rocket during the launch. So let's now take a look at the actual trajectory of Falcon Heavy using Flight Club. This is a free website you can use to view the trajectory of rockets and play back launches in real time. I'll include a link in the video description. Let's now see how well the Flight Club trajectory matches up to my footage of the launch through landing of the Falcon Heavy and its side booster. On the right side will be a couple of graphs of the altitude and velocity of the side booster, and I've deliberately selected what Flight Club labels as Stage 2. Stage 2 turns out to be the booster that I tracked all the way to touchdown. Now that naming is a bit unconventional, and definitely not the official name. The official Stage 2 for the actual Falcon Heavy is the stage directly above the core stage where the Tesla was mounted. But for the purposes of the Flight Club website, every part of the rocket that is tracked to produce a trajectory has to have a stage number. So for that website, the boosters are Stages 2 and 3, and the center stage is Stage 1, the second stage, the stage carrying the Tesla, is actually assigned stage number four. Let's now take a look at my footage of the launch one more time, this time side by side with the Flight Club trajectory. I'll point out that on the left-hand side, the view of the trajectory produced by Flight Club is not the same field of view as the telescope, not even close. The Flight Club view is a much wider field of view, 
covering a large portion of the sky, whereas the telescope is only looking at a very tiny portion of the sky at the rocket up close. As I pan the view up, you'll notice portions of the trajectory are labeled in red. That indicates when engines should be burning. The blue portion of the trajectory indicates a coast phase where the engines are not burning. At this point in the flight club trajectory, you can definitely see it should be pitching over at an angle and starting to build up horizontal velocity for orbit. see a gray portion of the trajectory coming up and that indicates when staging will occur. The boosters will separate and start to turn around and prepare for their boost back burn which you can see highlighted in red. As we get closer to staging you'll notice the trajectory according to Flight Club levels out and starts to even get closer to the horizon over time and you can see that reflected on the right as the booster looks like it's pointing down towards the ground. Right as the marker hits the new red segment, you can see the boost back burn begins, and the boosters start boosting back towards Cape Canaveral. Well, I thought it might be staggered, but it looks like they're simultaneous. Well, this is going to be great. Yep, they are. On the left you can see that the marker for the boosters doesn't move nearly as quickly as it did when the initial launch was occurring, and indeed they almost appeared to hang in the sky for a moment as they started to reverse their velocity. It became much easier to track them at this point because their apparent velocity, how quickly they moved in the sky at an angular rate, was not that high. It was actually quite low. Of course you couldn't see the boosters by eye during the day at this point, the only way I could see them was with the help of the telescope. Right on time, boost back shutdown occurs, and you can see the booster should be entering its coast phase according to Flight Club. During the boost back burn, control authority is provided by swiveling the engine, vectoring the thrust, but as soon as the engine shuts down, they switch to using these cold nitrogen gas thrusters to provide reaction control and turn the engines around to face into the atmosphere and get ready for the entry burn. I'll tell you when the, entry, when the entry burn happens, you can look up and see it, I'll tell you when. Okay, 
stages are now aiming directly at us. I can see him. Don't tell him that I won't. I won't touch him. I'm just getting ready to in case we can always get to see it. That's not fair. This is just that's literally aiming straight at us. There's no surface here. Right? We're waiting for the uh, stages to uh, put their fire in the so I can see what's happening. As we get ready for the entry burn, I want to point out that Flight Club does seem like at times the start and stop of the entry burn a second or two after the actual timing. However, the overall duration seems to be about the same, and it doesn't appear to impact the overall accuracy of the trajectory shown. Entry burn! Entry burn! Okay, yeah! Shut down one, shut down two. Now at this point, it's hard to see it in Flight Club, but the boosters are diverging. Once again, Flight Club is showing a much wider field of view than the telescope, and so the telescope is really zoomed in on a small area of the sky. But the trajectories of the two boosters are diverging a bit there in Flight Club, and you can really see that as the descent continues. You can also see how the booster's apparent angular rate is accelerating, even though its terminal velocity is dropping. It's falling quite fast, and I really have to move the telescope quite quickly to keep up with it. That apparent contradiction of increasing angular rate with decreasing vertical velocity is the result of the booster getting closer and closer to me. I was positioned less than seven miles from the landing site, so it's getting quite close at this point. Landing burn! So now let's take one last look at the trajectory of Falcon Heavy, starting from the position where I observed the launch and zooming out from Earth to take a look at it in three dimensions. You can see Launch Pad 39A where the Falcon Heavy launched from, as well as Landing Zones 1 and 2 where the boosters landed. As I pan up, you can see where the boost back and entry burn occurred and you can see where the path diverges where second stage continues on into orbit. If you search for John Krauss SpaceX you'll find a famous photo he took of the Zuma night launch which was a long exposure photograph capturing this entire arc of the rocket launching, boosting back, entry burn, and landing burn all in one shot and you will also see an arc of the second stage continuing on to orbit. If you look to the eastern horizon, you can see how the second stage continued a lengthy burn on into orbit and then coasted over the horizon. Once again, you can see that same pattern occur in John Krause's long exposure photo and others like it as well. As we look back at the trajectory over the Atlantic, we can see where the core stage was supposed to enter the Earth's atmosphere and touch down on the drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You. Unfortunately, it did not complete that objective successfully two out of three of the engines did not light during the landing burn and as a result it splashed down into the ocean hard and was destroyed. You can also see how during the boost back burn the boosters actually continue flying upwards and into the coast phase as well before they finally start descending and then perform their entry and landing burns. And one last time let's take one more look at how that second stage continues over the horizon and into orbit around the earth. 
as you can see, it does indeed enter orbit, and as a result of that, it does set over the horizon from the perspective of the launch site. I hope that clears up this issue. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching. Clear skies, folks.